to Shaw Spotlight. I'm here with owner and coach of the Kenora Skating Academy, Roxanne Daniel. And today we're talking about what the Academy has been doing during COVID. Roxanne, you've been a coach for over 40 years now, which is amazing. How did you get started and why do you like it so much? Um, I was actually a late starter. So I didn't actually start taking lessons till I was about 10 years old. And I was a joiner of everything. But skating was special. And uh, I loved it from the day I went onto the ice. Um, I said that I had been uh, walking through the doors of the rec center now for over 48 years. And so it really is my home away from home. Um, skating, because you can work individually, it allows you to progress at your own rate. Um, everybody excels at different skills of the sport um, differently. And when you're on the ice, it actually, talking to most skaters, they will tell you that it's your safe space. So anything that's going on around the world around you doesn't really matter when you're on the ice. And with COVID happening, it's been a real comforting spot for all of us. Yeah, that's true. That's a good yeah. point. And you sound passionate about it when you talk about it, like you just love it. Yeah, I do. Well, it's all I've ever known, right? Like um, I went from a skater and then I went right into coaching. So I knew at 13 that that's what I wanted to do. Um, spent the next five years um, kind of trying to get all the qualifications I could to become a coach. And then from there, I took my very first coaching job uh, in BC, and uh, it was a huge club, and I was a senior coach of 350 skaters there. So it was a real learning curve for me being kind of thrown in um, right off the hop into such a big club. But uh, it didn't discourage me and, uh, and been at it ever since. So how did you become the owner of the North Skating Academy? Yeah, well, um, you know, I have been the uh, coach with the Kenora Skating Club for um, probably 35 of the 42 years I've been coaching. And so the last 15, I was the technical director and um, had been running a lot of their programs. And it, the last few years had seemed like a natural progression for us. Um, I have always worked with an amazing group of people on the board of directors. And the last three years has been tough. Um, volunteer hours are becoming less and less. And so it was something we've talked about over the last three years. So in June of 2019, um, we had made the decision that as May 2020, um, the Kenora Skating Club would become the Kenora Skating Academy. I uh, didn't realize that would be happening in the middle of a pandemic, um, but it was probably a good move. Um, with the pandemic hitting, everybody's lives got kind of thrown um, upside down. And so, you know, I was able to take the reins of the academy and kind of guide the skaters um, to get back onto the ice with all the COVID protocols that had to be there. Um, it's really difficult for uh, most clubs and organizations to try to kind of weave through them with volunteer hours for sure. Well, you're right. So much has changed because of COVID and even ice wasn't being put into, into the rink. So how did you keep people skating? <laughs> um, so we found out in June um, of 2020 that we wouldn't be having our summer program, which we've been running for ever. And I personally didn't have the heart to tell the skaters that they wouldn't be able to go back on the ice, especially after being told they wouldn't be back in school. So I... Uh, I had seen a product, um, I had been thinking about synthetic ice for years, but I could never find um, figure skaters that had been on it. Hockey's been supporting it forever. And I had seen a video of Elvis Stoiko and his wife Gladys, so world medalist, world Olympic medalist, um, backing the product. And so I thought I'd give Gladys a call and find out about the product. Um, they had been using it for training and definitely said a uh, good option to go with. So I got our skaters together and I kind of said, what do you think? Would you support something like this? Is this something that you would try? And they were so desperate to do anything related to skating that they all said, yes, let's try it. So July of 2020, I opened the Kenora Skating Academy Synthetic Rink. And we had hockey programs and figure skating programs running all summer. And then um, September, when ice came back in, we kind of went on both places. And then 14 weeks of ice is all we actually had in our community this year when they took the ice out. So when we got back to yellow, 
um, I opened up the rink to uh, more hours and we have been skating since. And the rink itself, the rink surface is only about 1800 square feet. So it's easy to put um, smaller groups on. So even when we went back down to red, um, I only have four skaters on the ice at one given time for the grouping. And so we're still going. So we've been able to keep those skaters um, on the ice and, and doing what they want to do. And we're hoping um, in May to start our hockey program again. Um, for hockey, we, you know, we really are just teaching the science of skating. We have a small group, um, in a small space. We provide correction, um, to create change for hockey players. Well, it's amazing that you were able to do that for the skaters. What is the synthetic ice made of and how does it fit into the rink? So it is made of a ultra high molecular polyethylene, the big phrase of it. Um, but it is, it looks and feels like a hard plastic is what it is, what it looks and feels like. And it fits together like puzzle pieces. So very easy to install, very easy to replace a piece if you need that done. Um, you know, it's an easy clean method. Um, it, I, I always say my my shop back is my Zamboni, um, you know, and, and we wash it down uh, once a week. And yeah, so it's it works pretty cool. Well, that's nice. It's easy to maintain. Yes. Yes. That's the plus to it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is it harder to skate on? Definitely. It, there's been a learning curve for all of us. Um, um, I have skated on it a lot myself. I think I really needed to know what the skaters were going to feel when they went on it. And um, it definitely creates a stronger skater. The, the biggest thing we found when we went from the synthetic ice to the real ice, to the artificial ice um, this winter was the skaters said, oh my God, like my feet feel like they're moving faster than my body because they had created so much strength uh, and power from their pushing that that just transferred onto the ice. So um, it's definitely, like I said, a learning curve, but for them, it's a benefit. Wow. Well, it worked out well for you to get synthetic ice then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we, I mean, we use it as a tool. It definitely will never replace ice for sure, but it's a, it's a good tool. Um, and to keep them on right now, just learning, you know, the turns and their edges and, and, uh, definitely, uh, positions for jumping and spinning and things like that. We've been able to, to work with it. Is it still cold in the rink, even though it's not actual no. ice? No, we're, it's like a flooring. So we're in a building and, um, it, you know, they've always kind of skated in light clothing. Right now they're in t-shirts um, because it's getting warmer outside. It gets warmer in there. So, yeah, it's just like your living room floor. You can put it anywhere. That's the thing. People have put it in their basements. Yeah. Wow, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, for sure. So something you've also done this year is you've partnered with Kuwaitan. So how is that partnership going and have you gained anything from it? Well, it's funny because Debbie Novak, um, the head coach for the Kuwaitan Skating Club, um, her and I had met uh, in the summer of uh, probably 2019 um, in hopes that we would be able to combine our summer programs the following year. So we had actually been in touch before the pandemic um, of how we can come together. So when the pandemic hit, um, it was it was a blessing for us to have done that kind of communication and that looking at a partnership before then, because we were we were ready to come together um, when only one rink opened. So we were able to use all of our resources to put whoever wanted to be back on the ice could be back on the ice, regardless of which um, where they skated the rec center or the Kuwait and rink. So we did combine and put everybody onto the ice and, and we, we shared our coaching and, and we shared all of our hours and our skaters. And, and that was really great. And I think, um, you know, going forward, um, I can see, you know, us working together and, and, and keeping our resources, um, uh, open to, to new programming. Well, it's crazy how COVID presents all these opportunities to you that you never would have thought of beforehand that just worked out so well. I know, right? Like as as bad as COVID has been, and I think a lot of people will say this, it's definitely um, made people think outside the box. Uh, like for instance, this, right? Um, it, uh, things that people are doing that they never thought was possible to do before. 
um, we've had to um, out of a survival mode. Something else I thought was interesting that you've done this year is that you're the first club to be a part of Skate Canada's virtual pilot assessment days. What was that like? So um, Skate Canada, again, something that's never been done with, uh, with Skate Canada. Um, they put out a call for people who would like to be part of a pilot project um, for these virtual assessment days. And so with us, we've always had, we're considered more of an isolated community, and we've always had to bring um, evaluators, not always, but, you know, as, from as far away as Toronto and even Vancouver um, have come into our community to assess our skaters. And the hard part about that is that it, the cost goes back on the skater. So it seemed like a natural fit for us. So I right away put the application in. And um, when I got the call from Skate Canada saying that we were one of the clubs chosen for the pilot project, I was really excited. So I actually said to her, so how's it going? Like, you know, how are the pilots going? And uh, she informed me that we would be the very first club in Canada to, to do the assessments. So it was a little nerve wracking with the new technology that we had to learn and and how this whole process would go. Our coordinator was in Toronto. Our assessor was in Nova Scotia, which made, um, you know, this whole thing from one end to the other of the country um, uh, nerve wracking, um, but very, very positive. And it was a great day and a great move forward. Um, Skate Canada is going to continue with them with the pilot project right now, which is exciting for us. Um, the skaters felt far more relaxed. Um, it was different. They were talking into a screen. Their assessor was like looking at them through the screen. So all of those things um, were different, but such a positive move um, forward for our, our organization and our skaters. I'm so glad that worked out so well. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are some of the upcoming programs You'll be running. So we're continuing. Um, we'll just be finishing. Actually, this week is our last week of our winter program uh, with the skaters. And then uh, we're going to start spring, uh, which starts um, on Monday. And odd for our skaters because they've never been on the ice all year long. They've always had a little bit of a break. But this is a chance for them, you know, where they can keep them their skates on for a couple hours a week if they want to. So we'll continue with that. Um, we are... Uh, Again, we're going to open up our hockey skating skills program and, and hoping in the future to add an adult program. I know there's been some uh, talk in the community of um, wanting to get adults onto the ice in an adult program and then maybe some more learn to skate one on one um, coaching. Um, so, yeah, like the possibilities are endless um, when COVID lets up, you know, when our when our community becomes safer and um when we can, you know, and, and vaccines are, are more readily available to our community. I think that, you know, in years to come, we'll see more programming um, being able to be offered here. Well, it's good that you're planning ahead. Yes, yes, <laughs> for sure. Yes, future, future, for sure. So how can people get involved with some of these programs? So we have a, a website. Um, it is www skatingincanora.com um, or they can always give myself a call Roxanne at 466-6962. Do you have any fundraisers to support the programs that you're running? So we do. Um, we've just finished our second Purdy's order and we had a mom's pantry this year. Um, we have, um, uh, I've got to get the names right. We have fun script and flip give. Um, which are two online programs um, that we run all year long and they're accessible through our website. Um, our code is on there. So anybody that does any online ordering can order through those companies and then they give back to our club or academy. And that helps the skaters. Oh, yeah, it helps the skaters with, um, you know, uh, right now there's no travel, um, but there's still assessments going on and it helps them to be able to support their skating and, you know, they can put it towards their travel and accommodations and any fees they have to pay, things like that. So it, it definitely helps them going forward. Well, you never know what's going to happen. So it's good to plan ahead with fundraisers too, to make sure you always have 
something because anything can happen. Things change. Absolutely. I mean, this has been a tough year um, for a lot of clubs, um, for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you've been able to keep people skating and that you've done so much changing and evolving and it sounds like for the better. So thank you so much, Roxanne, for talking to me today about the Kunar Skating Academy and all the great work you're doing to keep kids skating. Thanks so much, Vicki. It's been great to let the community know we haven't really done a lot of advertising um, on it just because of COVID and, and our groups are small, but I'm excited to see um, where it can go.